it seems a little early. Hello and welcome to Game of Dota 2. You are watching the second game of the series. The series being the loser bracket semi-finals. Rox gets taken on Team Empire. And one of these two teams is going to go experience the rest of Starlight Land Finals as a spectator. While the other one will be facing Navi in the loser bracket finals. We already have got Empire one game up compared to Rox So we're going to see if Rox can force out a third game. Or if Empire is just going to 2-0 it according to the prediction that my co-caster made. Vickermont, welcome back. Good to be back, Shiver. Uh, game 2, Rox actually bans up the troll, which is interesting. But... Uh, Certainly trying to be reactive to what Empire did in the first game. Empire with a pretty cool composition, actually. Uh, they ran, of course, a couple of the newer heroes to add it to CM, the very strong Troll Warlord Elder Titan, and they combo all with each other. But they also had the support silencer, which actually fit into the composition incredibly well and saved a lot of people's lives with that global silence. So we'll see if Empire have any more tricks up their sleeve or if they're going to try to play standard, and we'll certainly see what Rock's Kiss can actually put together because they're now 0-3 in uh, this land final. Yeah, it's a pretty depressing uh, number right there, and they're going to look to at least make a breadstick out of the bagel. Ah, oh, there you have it. So Rock's Kiss is uh, it's going to ban out the OD in the end, so that means that we're going to have Naga and Bet, one of the two, or maybe even both, still in the pool, and of course, not just those. I was going to say because Elder Titan is there as well, but Elder Titan just got removed. But that means that we're going to have a Naga, Saren, and Bet, and Rox can only pick up one of those two. Yeah, they definitely an interesting set of bands. We start seeing these heroes climbing into band status that, uh, I mean, they've just been getting wider and wider adoption among teams. And Troll with that amazing global ultimate uh, with the um, insane attack speed is really, really strong, of course, both for team fighting and for pushing. And Elder Titan is just, if you took AoE, Bane, Sleep, and positionable Keeper of the Light Ultimate, and a better version of Dark Sears Vacuum, and uh, double damage and put them all together. Naga will be the choice from Roxkiss, which leaves Empire to take Batrider, which is one of Scandal's favorite heroes, uh, or, or one of the best heroes back when it, before it was banned 100% of the time. And it'll be, probably be Batrider plus X. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing a Life Sealer as that one. Extra hero. Or maybe even the Abaddon, just to make sure that Rox doesn't pick up the Abaddon to... Uh, no, it's the Life Sealer. But I would say, like, a Abaddon, you already have your Disable and the Naga Siren, and Abaddon would, of course, be able to just get rid of the Lasso straight away. But Life Sealer, Bat Rider, a combination that we, when we actually see a Bat Rider, we see often, because you can infest inside the Bat Rider, and you've got yourself a very aggressive combination right there that can jump all over the map and grab people and kill them off and eat them up, and then, you know... Be winning, winning, winners, or winning, either one, you can choose. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the Weaver's a solid pickup for rocks. It is a hero that, generally speaking, has somewhat of an advantage over Lifestealer, simply because of the lack of strong uh, tools for the Lifestealer to deal with it. It also sometimes pushes the Lifestealer player towards uh, picking up an earlier Midas than he otherwise would with the idea being that the Midas guarantees you the gold income to hit phase, armlet, and uh, abyssal. Abyssal is really a scale tipper because it allows the lifestyle to actually lock the weaver down and kill him. Uh, so, so maybe we'll see Empire do that. Uh, it's not Silent's general style. He likes to be much more in your face and fighting. Interesting that, given that, Silent actually doesn't play that much Lifestealer relative to Gyro and Weaver. So we'll see his facility with this hero. And we'll see Nexus on the Weaver. Nexus is more known as a Lifestealer player. Yeah, and there's your bad and ban straight away, Empire. Don't want to see that, especially combined up with that Weaver, which is a pretty scary sight. We have the Visage ban out as well. I mean, Empire hasn't picked up any of their supports just yet, so we're going to assume that they still need two. You know which hero we haven't really seen of, of much of? Today, at least? Who? Nyx Assassin. Yeah, but I, I think Nyx in general has become less popular. Uh, he's pretty level dependent, uh, and you don't really get as many support levels in the 014 meta. Like, you just don't, because half the jungle is taken, or a decent person of the jungle is taken by the guy who goes to the jungle, whether that be Darkseer or Nyx's Prophet or Batrider or whatever. And then uh, you're in lane, so you're not getting much XP. Nyx is okay when he's level starved, but really, like, the point of picking the hero is to 
be able to do double ravage and kill supports with vendetta and mana burn and you really just don't have all the tools you need if you don't get the levels sometimes you can still run a mid in fact lgd china is still running nix's ass in mid uh which is interesting but I, it's not something that empire does oh, it is very situational and, and indeed um both of these teams don't really play Nyx Assassin in that mid game, all, uh, mid lane all that much, or at all even. We still have Puck and Queen of Pain in the pool, by the way, talking about mid laners, and we know that BZ loves both of those. Scandal, same story, though maybe a bit less Puck, more Queen of Pain and TA. But we'll see uh, which one they get their hands on, as Empire is now allowed to first ban and then pick a hero. And we're gonna see uh, which one they want to go for. We still have the Rubik in the pool. Also a hero that works pretty nicely together with a life suitor, especially for the early game, because of course life suitors open wounds can't really initiate, and you want to have just a telekinesis there to just pick someone up and drop them in the claws of the life suitor. That could work out work out just fine. It really depends though if we are gonna see an aggressive trial lane or if we're just gonna see two safe trial lanes. Because we had of course Empire being an aggressive trial laner on the previous game. Yeah, and it was it was very effective just because of that unorthodox composition that they used. And it's really funny about how targeted these bands are coming. Like, Rock's Kiss taking out the troll and the uh, Silencer. When was the last time we saw a Silencer band? And, I mean, sometimes you see it as a fifth band when a team recognizes that it can just completely counterpick them. But taking it as a fourth band is like, we really, really don't want you to have this hero. And I don't blame them. Um, a, silence, a global silence against Weaver is pretty beastly. Yeah, it is very scary because, I mean, he relies on being mobile in a fight, being able to use his time lapse and just being silenced up. Well, there goes your, basically your whole identity as a weaver. Uh, there's the Rubik as uh, predicted, uh, picked up by Empire. No surprise there, though. Pretty standard hero to be having. And of course, this time it's on the side of Empire. Previous game was on the side of uh, Rocks. We saw Solo playing that one. I'm kind of curious to see how... Rox is gonna be running their supports as we've seen Solo play both Naga Siren and other supports and Yol also has played the Naga Siren and the previous time that we saw Solo play the Naga Siren it really wasn't all that successful so maybe he is gonna be picking uh, up the secondary support. In comes the Doom again and that makes me believe that we are gonna see an aggressive trial in again. Putting Doom on a safe lane worked out just great last time and he can actually yeah. be doing okay up against a Darkseer because his Devourer can just pick up all the creeps with the Iron Shell on it. That's a very good point. He's he's quite a good 1v1 laner against Darkseer. So, yeah, we could end up with that matchup. Um, we It'll be interesting to see what Rock's Kiss does now, because Naga Weaver is a, a lane that can actually go aggressive itself, so they can still try to force out the, the 3v1 matchup and put the Darkseer up top solo. So uh, we still have to figure out how Rock's Kiss are going to fill out their draft, because Empires is just looking scarier and scarier. I think they've picked themselves up a really, really solid approach. Yeah, I think so too. It, it looks just, you know, it worked last time. Why wouldn't it work this time? Gonna see if Rox has an answer for this. We are gonna see two heroes that are normally off laner. So Sidoy plays both Darkseer and Lone Druid. And he plays him well. I mean, we talked about Sidoy in CD, CD, and him being just, just having amazing control with that hero, with creating some brilliant moments. And also yeah. his Lone Druid definitely is not something that you can get complacent against. And yeah. right now, are you expecting Nexus to play the Lone Druid or maybe Yul to play the and then or maybe Yul to play the Darkseer and so is Sido still playing the Lone Druid? How are you expecting uh, they're gonna run this? Well, I, I there's a couple different ways that they can do it. I don't think either of those are necessarily the plan. I think it's gonna be either Weaver or Darkseer going up into the mid lane, and I think it's more likely to be Darkseer. So I my guess is that it's uh, business perfect on the Darkseer, Sidoy on Lone Druid, and Nexus on Weaver. Uh, because Darkseer has a decent matchup against Batrider, it's not terrible. Batrider's range is short enough that if he comes up to try to harass the Darkseer, he'll take a lot of damage by passing through the Ion Shell area. Yeah, we just said that Doom was a good matchup for the Darkseer, but Lone Druid, Doom has got some issues with him. And of course it's right. going to be also a bit of the battle of the levels, because the moment that Doom reaches level 6, you're going to see him trying to go for the Lone Druid, but at the same time there's going to be Entangles because Lone Druid already gets them, those at level 5. So we're going to see who's going to be, or if Lone Druid is lucky enough to get a kill at level 5, if that is actually going to be the matchup, obviously. But that's um, a lot more tougher matchup for, for Doom. I think that Empire is kind of... In general, of, yeah. Yeah. Empire kind of 
maybe taken aback by that pick. They are taking their time. They still have 40 seconds in their bonus time, though, so they can take the time that they want. Enchantress and Lashrek banned out last. Interesting ban for Lashrek. Now, we've seen a lot of Lifesealer Lashrek lanes pre-TI3. Uh, but I haven't seen him in a while with the Rubik and the Life Seeder. It's a very good one, though. Wouldn't be surprised to see something like a Lena or, you know, something that can be very aggressive as well here. Because that's sure. what we're going to Sure, I do think that Lena would be a pretty bad pick. I hope oh. they don't go, I don't hope they don't pick it. Just because Lina. it's, it, she's, first of all, she's actually one of the worst win rate heroes in competitive. You're a bad uh, but, with Lena. Sorry. She's, she's fine. Like, it, it's a, it's an interesting hero and it's got, Upsides, but uh, okay. Booyah! <laughs> I don't think this is a good pick, honestly. I, I, she dies to Weaver. Ooh. She dies to Lone Druid. I okay. I mean, so Lena's kind of cool. She has uh, one of the best attack ranges in the game, so she can harass from a very far distance. Uh, she does good damage. I I don't know. I, I don't think it's a good pick. I think she's pretty bad overall, but I do like how Empire in two games have drafted very warm background colors. In yes. This game, they only have Rubik, and last game it was actually 5-5 five, five with warm background They've colors. They've got four of a kind. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think that the Lone Druid pick was really strong for Rox. It's a hero that yeah. Sidoria is good on. And it really threw a wrench in the plan of just Doom shutting down their lineup completely. Because Doom will trash Weaver until he gets Lincolns. Yeah, and it's the Chen. No surprise. I like the Enchantress ban, because they would have rather had Enchantress than Chen, because it would be more favorable for an aggressive try capacity. But uh, they still take the Chen, they're still happy with it. I have to say, just I'm just really happy that they picked up the Crystal Maiden, so I could say Booyah. They didn't pick up the Crystal Maiden. I mean, Lina. <laughs> <laughs> they picked up her sister. Yes. But yes, that was He's yeah. I'm, good, good call. Yeah, yeah. I, it's funny. I was looking at the Lashrak ban, and I was like, "That's funny." I this is call, calls back to when everybody would pick either Lashrak or Alina, yeah. and I was like, "Well, they're, but they're certainly not gonna pick Alina." No. Um, Why would they? Okay. I mean, hey, uh, if they land the stun chain on Weaver and just kill him with the Laguna Blade, then that's gonna be a really, really shut down Weaver. I just, I still don't, I don't really see. It's gonna. I'm gonna be watching Lone Druid really closely this game, basically. Yeah, let's see who's playing what. Because as you said, we are gonna see Sidoy playing uh, one of his stronger heroes, the Lone Druid. Yol once again on this Chen, and of course able to send back anybody that gets doomed again. Nexus playing a Weaver that he uh, often plays, though as you already mentioned, he normally plays more Life Seer than the Weaver, but he has been playing quite a bit of Weaver lately. We are gonna see Solo playing the Naga Siren, and I mean. I feel like there's a lot of pressure on him because I haven't seen him perform all that well. And I wouldn't be... Oh, yes. wait a second. What you doing, Empire? Well, Yul's able to get himself out. He really wants to protect his his, his camp spot, but he can't. In comes BZZ from the trees. BZZ is playing the Dark Sea of this game. The Iron Shell is already up on Nexus. In comes the Shikushi. They go for the Lina. Always want to fly in a lot of trouble. And he will be getting the stun off. But he also goes down before he can do anything else. Nexus, though, gets picked up there. That's going to be a one for one exchange. Silent running away from the Iron Shell. He can't do that. That's going to be another kill going the way of Rock's Kiss. Two for one thus far. And going in favor of Roxkis, and of course, I mean, even though Nexus did, did die, he is going to be back on the lane in time before the creep wave spawns. And therefore, I would say Rox, good start for them. Definitely. Nice deny for Yul in the room. Ooh. I like how oh, three different players of oh, what? Yul is sitting on the high ground. Is he? But he, he, he ate his way through. The good trees. work. Yeah. I. Uh, it's kind of funny that. Um, there's three different players in this game who all have the, like, love in their names. <laughs> Silent loves Mila, Nexus loves Aliona, and Vanscore loves Meow Meow, so <laughs> it's a very loving, uh... I mean, these teams are, I think they know each other pretty well, they're both Russian teams, they scrim together a lot, so... Yeah. It's all very friendly and loving environment. They ended up running, so, uh, you introduced Rock's Kiss. No, me, not, not, for... I was interrupted by the Empire Walking Oh, fair enough. So I'm not sure who I did introduce, but Nexus will be playing uh, the Weaver here, as he is up against an aggressive trial, and we do have a safe trial, and though Yol on this gen already introduced him, Solo on his Naga, already introduced him as well. BZ on the Darkseer already introduced him. I might have just introduced everybody already. Nexus, by the way, <laughs> running for his life. Telekinesis will be there. Oh, we were talking about communication and all that jazz? 
Well, that was not communicated at all. Light Strike Array under the initial lifting point, and then Vanscore dropped the target back closer. Yeah, well, and I blame I blame the hero. <laughs> I blame Lena. <laughs> oh, you can't do that. That's not possible. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm just kidding, of course. Yeah, that was a miscommunication, absolutely. The telekinesis and the light strike array not being coordinated at all. And it's a, a, that probably was a free kill, but they don't take it. Yep. I will leave uh, Empire to be introduced by you. All right, so uh, up in this try lane, they are once again, for the second time, running an aggressive try. So far, not as effective as it was in the first game, but we'll see what they can put together. Vanscore on the Rubik. Uh, he'll be helped by Ooh. always want to fly on the Lina and so oh actually we missed a kill in the mid. How does wow? It, that okay. was Darkseer overextending the tower actually got uh, blasted in the end. Okay, yeah. I first of all my mic is blocking my mini map, so I can't see what's going on. <laughs> all right. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just my mic was in a bad position. I uh, actually it looks like yeah these are really good lane matches for Empire. So uh, the carry in the top is going to be Silent on the Life Stealer. They forced out the Doom Darkseer matchup, which we talked about during the draft phase, as something that they would want. So it's actually Mag running an unusual mid Doom, but it's gone very well, including a kill. And so that just leaves Scandal to go up on the Bat Rider against Sidoy's Lone Druid. Yeah, Sidoy is not doing too bad. Oh, wait a second on the top lane, a bit of a uh, ruffle going on here, and snare upon Sidoy. Still is able to throw out a Fate Bolt though, but oh, can he get away? Yes, he can. Everybody gets away, apart from Nexus, perhaps. One more flame. Nah, it's too late. Another cool thing about Lena is how uh, her Dragon Slave animation is completely misleading for how much with the damage hey, range. Can you stop bashing on Lena? <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm just doing it to you know. You know. <laughs> you, I, I know you. You were expecting Empire. You, your bet was Empire 2-0. Uh huh. But now, if you, if like, if you're gonna be right, you're gonna be wrong with Lena. Uh huh. Okay. That's that's true. That's a good point. I'm I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place, definitely. So you, you don't have an easy way out for this one. Right? I do, I know I don't. You're gonna lose regardless. Right. I'm gonna lose regardless. That's just what I wanted to say. <laughs> uh, in the bottom lane, Sidoy is actually doing quite well. He's 13 for three. Bat Rider. He's pretty much even with Bat. He's just harassing constantly with the bear. You can see he took the Orb of Venom, which just gives him even even more harassment. So it's a great lane for Lone Druid. Uh, Ooh, it's a fine lane for that, right? top lane. He rages, tries to get himself out of the net. Brilliant block coming off from nice Yol. That wolf doing work. Open Wound still hit up a solo, but there's nobody there to follow up uh, with. That's, that was Yol, because he started off with blocking so that Naga could get in range with the ensnare. And all of a sudden, nice skill for rocks. Kudos to the Alpha Wolf. Yeah, they ch chase the supports away and then just uh, abuse Lifestealer. Very, very strong play. And so that puts them, now it's uh, two deaths for this Lifestealer. He is going straight for phase boots, and he is out farming uh, Nexus by some margin. So it's not actually that bad of a situation for Empire just yet. The issue is that, I mean, Yol is going to be way ahead on XP relative to any of the supports in the Trilight of Empire. Yeah, we've got BCZ trying to actually... BZ gets doomed up the moment that I look at him. Mag, is he actually going to chase this? Because he is quite low, and in comes the Naga Siren. That's not going to be a dead dark seer. He's going to live through this. Yeah, easy. He's gonna and he can bottle easy. up. So Mag actually probably sent... Going to go Fountain and then TP back in, I guess. Yeah, would assume so. And Tangle no, maybe up not. Scandal. He's just gonna... ah. Scandal does uh, have a bit lower levels right now than the... Then the Lone Druid, but even with an Entangle, there's no death yet here on this bottom lane, and Scandal's doing just fine for himself, I think, considering that Ciro is indeed having a bear that is level 3, aka there's an Entangle on board, so he has to be extra careful with the harassment that he takes. We have got the trial lane complete on the top lane, though, Empire, with that aggressive trial lane. They were only able to pick up one kill thus far, am I saying that right? Or no, they didn't pick up a single one. They haven't gotten any... Uh, kills at all because yeah. they oh. uh, there was a kill in the silent solo income telekinesis light strike array again again missed solo will be sent home but he will go down before he does but they get silent in return that's a worthy trade right there and again light strike array with the telekinesis combination just plain out fails in comes bzz goes for an iron shell gives it to the nexus wants to go for van square comes to light strike array this one hits uh. always want to fly Gets the kill. Vanscore though will still get picked up. A one for one trade. Not a worthy one though. No one's wanna fly. Actually, not on just yet. That's BZ dodging a stun. But the open wounds are there. The surge is it in time? Nope. Hello, Mag. 
That's gonna be a kill. Should be a kill. There we go. Mag with the Scorched Earth will get the kill in the in the end. And that's Roxkis just overextending. And we talked about this. We saw this in the previous game from both teams. But Roxkis, they haven't learned their lesson just yet. Scandal actually goes for this. He gets a double damage rune, but Tidoy has got face boots picked up on his himself, not on the hero, not on the bear, but on his hero. And because of those, he was able to get himself out. And he gets the first hit in Tangle. Uh oh, this is actually really bad for Scandal. And the bear can chase through the flames. Don't forget that. Cedo is not going to continue chasing though. Bear is. In comes the teleport, this Lina. This is terrible. Yeah, Scandal takes a lot of damage. And now we're going to see if Light Strike Array will land. I think so. Uh, Four stacks. Pointing. No. Nope. Oh, he Five gets it. Five stacks. Nice. That's one dead Actually, Cedo. they get him. Yeah. Nice. Maybe he always want to fly. will still go down if he gets... Yeah. <laughs> Is awesome. Oh, Lena, you're so bad as a hero. Hey, um, she helped Silent, get a kill. She did help get a kill, so it's a fine trade. Lena for Lena for Lone Druid is a trade you're happy to make, and really good defensive. I mean, that TP from Always Wanna Fly was really critical. Uh, the whole idea there was Scandal was going to try to bait Sedoy as deeply as he could before dying, so that they could probably at least trade. But instead, Batrider lives and actually gets the kill. That's a big deal. They have two level eight players now. Scandal is level eight. He's no longer behind on XP. Right? He's actually a little ahead mm -hmm. after that kill on Cedoy. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Mag has just been dominating this mid lane. So actually, Cedoy is in the mid now. Interesting little rotation. They've brought the Darkseer down and the Lone Druid up. And these lanes, I think, are more favorable for Roxas than the ones that they actually had. Yeah, well, yeah. Cedoy, yeah, indeed, now sitting mid up against that. Well, up against Mag. Although, I mean, Mag is not even here right now. I think that for Empire, maybe it is time to stop with the laning phase. Although, finally, they're getting more up on Silent here on this top lane. But I think it's time to get some extra levels up on their heroes, because even though this aggressive trial hasn't necessarily lost for Empire, they've been shut down and experienced quite hard, with Silent still only level 5, and he kind of needs a bit more. So I'm kind of expecting a bit of more of a rotation. Maybe they will still wait for Scandal to get his Blink Dagger, though I think that's uh, probably logical proceedings of things, Empire. Well, they'll go for infest bombs after, but then again, life still needs to be level 6 for that. But I'm, I'm expecting them to try and end the laning stage as fast as possible, just because the longer it goes on, the more beneficial it is for Roxkis, because they have got the heroes that need the longest ramp-up time with the Lone Druid and the Weaver. That's, yeah, I, I think you're completely right. Once they do get that Blink Dagger on Batrider, they're going to be trying to pick off the Weaver as, as often as possible. Especially because the more kills that Lifestealer participates in on Weaver, the closer he's going to come to fu to filling that experience gap. Now, farm-wise, keep in mind, uh, Silent has been doing quite well. Like he's, He has 47 last hits. It's about 6 a minute. Uh, actually, a little less. But for the off lane, for the fact that they're in this aggressive lane, and he's died three times, that's actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly higher than what Nexus has been able to put up on Weaver with only 23 last hits, despite his experience advantage. Yeah, he's, do he's doing pretty well. And I mean, no towers are down just yet, so all this gold just comes from farming because the kills are even as well. And of course, for first blood go goes to Rock's Kiss, but overall, in all the lanes, they are ahead of their uh, competitors. So Empire definitely yep. not doing bad. And yeah, Blink Dagger, I think, is going to be uh, the one thing to uh, set the pace and uh, or at least speed up the pace. Let's just call it that. We already have got Doom almost having his drums complete, though, and he is uh, smoked up, yeah. so he is going to look for something, or someone, rather. I think Empire are actually in pretty good shape. I, I do like their lineup overall, and they will find some good timings. If they manage to get level 6 for Always One of Fly's Lena in a pretty quick fashion, they can kill that Weaver in the course of the lasso, right? Mm -hmm. So, And he's going for tier 2 boots, and he has a Ring of Basilius, so he didn't. he's not rushing that Lincoln Sphere. So if he doesn't have Lincoln Sphere... They're going to be able to consistently kill him if Batrider blinks on him. Just with, with between Laguna Blade and the other stuns that they can throw out, they surely have enough damage to take this Weaver down without necessarily having to expend Doom on him. You can Doom something like Darkseer or even Naga. Oh, well, they go for the Darkseer. I think they want to also Doom him up. In comes uh, Surge already used. That means that BZ won't have it once Mag comes out. But it looks like he is gonna he's going to be TPing middle because that's where he wants to be. He wants to help protect or kill off Solo. But he wants to help protect Solo. Solo dies, obviously. Uh, get picked up. He is still level 5, so no song to save his life, even though he shouldn't have used it regardless. So, I mean, that was just a rotation from Empire, getting a successful pickup for that one. Three-man gank. 
Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, you see, they not only do the gank, but now they're giving always want to fly the free lane. So I think this is pretty smart. If you're going to run Lina, you have to make sure that you get that Laguna Blade relatively quickly. So he has it at 9.5 minutes. Uh, this does, you know, 450 damage pre-magic resistance. So let's lop off a quarter of that. It still does 300, 350 damage. Sound oh, and a lot out. of trouble top. Yep, he has got a rage. He infests into a creep first. This is it a friendly creep, though? So that was awkward, but Rox gets too scared. Life. And I think Rocks just because they're chasing Nexus back to Fountain, they feel like they can probably. Sorry, they're chasing Silent back to Fountain. They're just going to turn that into a tier 1 tower push with the Lone Druid. Yep. With that bear, the demolish extra pushing power, and the same time Scandal also makes some uh, trouble in the bottom lane with a bit of extra pushing, but already BZZ sitting around here. Oh, wait a second. Fan score caught out completely. Picked off very easy. Nice light strike ray upon three though, including the bear that is. Doom up on solo will get sent home. Let's see if it's in time. Ooh, yes it is. Yes it is. And the fountain heals more than the doom, at least at level one doom. So he is gonna be okay. Let's see if the rest is okay though, because it comes silence. They're looking for Cedoy. He tries to run the bear, of course, looking for some lucky entangles. In the meantime, Bear Rider gets a solo kill. Nice light strike ray up on two light again. Strike. Yeah. But always want to fly. Now in some trouble. Gets chased by a bear. One more entangle would do it. Nexus coming in. That's an entangle. And that's a kill right there. They're hanging around. And now... Now Empire has to back off. They realize that. They do just so. First an entangle. Oh, Hell yeah. Cool. Well, the rage comes Straight. out. And that's gonna be... Overall, it's one for one. Zero. Skill base zero. Yeah, for sure. Actually, the tower will get the knight here in the mid lane. Curious to see why Cedar doesn't send his bear for that, but better safe than sorry, I guess. Scandal, though. I mean, he has his blink dagger, he didn't get the tower, he did get a solo kill upon uh, BZZ, who is now delayed with his mechanism, so that's a pretty big deal, because you kind of want to have your mechanism when Scandal gets his blink dagger, because he's gonna jump around and create fights, and you want to have that mech for those fights. Yep. I mean, I, I can't honestly tell what even is the balance of this game at this point because once again we have a for two games in a row the first 10 to 15 minutes are just exceedingly sloppy play by both sides but i, I think the scale tipper for me shiver is that uh during all that time scandal has been playing a lot safer than the rest of his team it ha now has this level two lasso and blink dagger so he's two levels above anybody else on the map as Batrider. He's 2 and 0 He has Dust of Appearance. He has Blink Dagger. This is going to start being a dead weaver whenever uh, Batrider's on, on the field. Yeah, and he's going to have some backup here as well. Looking for uh, the kill, the show off of the Blink Dagger. Hello, Nexus. I'd say also by Nexus. Even Laguna Blade used for that. Hand of God. Too late. Kill secured. Yep. Almost want to fly. Can't do that kind of jazzle. So, right now, the thing is, with getting successful ganks, can they also take down towers off of those kind of ganks? Right now, they took a kill top, they're not taking down the tower. So far, there's only one tower down. Of course, it was a deny, but nonetheless, tower in the mid lane is down on the side of Empire, which is a very important tower. So, it's okay to have it denied in a way, just gives a lot less control to Empire themselves, as Empire is gonna see their tier 1 top getting pressured as well. We have Lone Druid, Solo, and Chen coming in to see uh, what they can accomplish here. They will find an army of uh, Empire though, Empire Heroes there, with three here on this top lane, but it's gonna be full focus on the tower while well, the bear is getting focus for Empire, and they will actually be able to get the three on the gold. There we go, Scandal nice. with the kill and snare for Mag. Nice Chen and snare stopping the chase. In comes the song. Four heroes here, four versus four, that's gonna be it. V look for the vacuum, there we go, up on three, a song stolen by Vanscore, and that <laughs> is gonna be a counter-initiation. Next comes oh in as well, that's actually God. gonna be them backing off safely. And snare, Maybe ooh, not. long range and snare, was gonna fly, cut out, nice light strike array though, helps out, solo, walks for forward, gets picked off, always wanna fly, will still end up getting picked off there, so it's a one for one at least. Doom comes out up on Nexus, trying to get himself away, the infest damage though, he is gonna get sent home, is it gonna be in time? I don't think it is! There he goes, dead he is! BZZ now on the run, has got another surge in store for himself so he can get himself out. Yo, I don't think he is gonna be as lucky, of course he has no ch such thing as a surge. And he is slower than Silent to sell his face boots and Yul just got brown boots, he's dead. Mag is Silent, dominating, 4-0-2. He did, by the way, in this game. Remember I said that when you have certain matchups with Lifestealer, you get pressured into going the Midas? Wait, that was this game. Yeah, so he went the Midas. So I, I, I think this is a really good call for Silent. 
it'll catch him up on XP and it'll move him towards that Abyssal. So that's a really good pickup. As for that fight, I don't know. I've been mean already this game, so I don't want to keep being mean, but maybe I just want to keep being mean. Do you think that Star Ladder decided to unban Solo because they, they knew that it would be sabotage for Rock's Kiss? I think maybe, wait a second, let's off lane as BZ goes down again. Um, you know that um, Quantic was not able to make it, obviously. They had Fada mm -hmm. with a broken hand, even though at the first day there was actually talk that they would still be able to go. And last time they had someone with a hand injury, they played with the stand in, so it has been done before. But sure. when they decided not to go, there was actually only a very short time left for people to. Uh, to arrange themselves. For example, Rattlesnake, the one that, or Speed Gaming, sorry, the one that was yeah, otherwise eligible to go, couldn't go because it was too short notice. And right. perhaps the only reason that Rox could play was if Solo would be there. Maybe. Either way, he's... Uh, he hasn't been executing at the level commensurate with a support for a team trying to win Star Ladder Season 7 Land Finals. Like... What is the excuse for not casting another spell and letting your song be stolen, thus completely ruining your initiation? Like, it's just not... You shouldn't do that. You, That's, you no. have seven seconds in which to cast either Riptide or... I mean, he didn't have Mirror Image skilled, but... The, the cooldown of Riptide is not long enough that you wouldn't be able to cast him. I don't know. It's, uh, it's awkward and it's... It's sloppy. It's just sloppy. Now, on the uh, upside for Roxkiss, Empire is not the sharpest of the bunch either, so they make some mistakes that Roxkiss can maybe uh, profit from, but at the rate they are going right now, Roxkiss do not deserve to take this game. Yeah, I mean, either way, Roxkiss are going to sneak a Roche. I think this is maybe the right call because they're substantially behind. I wouldn't call behind. it sneaking, though. Ooh, in comes a yep. song. Hello, mirror images. Woohoo! Solo does it. It'll actually run out. They might still steal Roche. No, they don't. No, Good. even with they the ages. The... Lasso sell up on Solo. Hand of God tries to save his life. Laguna Blade comes out, though. That's one dead on the side of Rock's Kiss. Looking for more. Mag getting entangled up. Looks like Rock's Kiss just wants to make a run for it. And they're just bailing out on this fight. As, um, well, maybe the bear will still get picked up. But it looks like everybody else will be, will be uh, just fine. You was able to walk the other way and um, didn't get people chasing him. So that's going to be it. At least uh, for this fight, giving Solo for uh, Roshan is pretty worth it. Yeah. I was really worried. I thought that they might not actually kill... Rosh wasn't going down that fast when they used the song, but... Song lasts a very, 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 very long time. And you see he actually did skill the mirror image, uh, just to give him another spell that he can cast to make sure that song isn't stolen. And he, if Vanscore didn't get it that time, he does have Shikuchi, so... This has been a very pretty effective Rubik on the whole. Good steals. Yep, uh, doesn't get the deny on the tower in the end, Lone Druid's Baron gets it, Vanscore gets picked up for it. If, uh, if he actually got himself a uh, deny with that, that would have been worth it, but doesn't get the deny and therefore yeah. feeds. In the meantime, talking about feeding, perhaps Mag is going to feed away a kill. Nah, he gets left alone with BZZ and, and Yo and so not able to have the damage to take him down. They would have the yep. disable, but they just don't have the damage for it. And it would be, of course, Empire getting in there fast enough to back him up. Yep. So after they get that Roshan, unanswered Empire went in maybe a little too late and just didn't manage the fight as well as they could have. And after they take that tower bottom and another free kill, I don't know who I favor anymore. I think the Scandal Batrider moment was very strong. He did get a bear kill and he hasn't died, so he's 2-0-4. That means his uh, four staff is only about three creeps away. Yeah, he'll get it in a second. So that's still a big deal. Batrider is still a big deal. But uh, Lone Druid is starting to be fairly intimidating. And uh, he does have the Maelstrom built on the bear, and he's going to start going towards more items. I think Cedar is going to be more and more of a factor. He's just got to play... He's, yeah, that was pretty chancy, but luckily they didn't gank him. Yeah, he has to be the one to carry his team to victory as Solo gets uh, well, almost killed off by supports, but looks like he'll make it. Weaver, on the other hand, not really all too hot. He is, of course, going for BKB, but it's taking a long time. I mean... If you look at the net worths, he is very far away from the uh, from the rest of the core. Same thing goes for the Darkseer, by the way. I mean, BCC was a solo mid Darkseer. Yeah. He hadn't had the easiest lane with the tr with the Doom up against him, but he should still right. be able to to get a bit of farm going. And he only really has a mechanism and and just brown boots and a bottle, and it doesn't look like right. he was a solo mid Darkseer at all. 
Yeah, I don't know how much Darkseer BZZ plays, and you do see a lack of familiarity with the hero reflecting in some extent in his play. Oh, I do love, God, this ward from Rock's Kiss is worth its weight in gold, like, or I should say, <laughs> it's worth exactly 100 gold, but it's or 75, but it's worth a lot more than that because it's saving Weaver. They completely spotted the Lifestealer going inside the Batrider, so that they know that this is happening now, and it's allowed Nexus to position very easily. Yeah. I think his BKB is done? No, it's not. Nah, he only has Mithra Hammer, I think. But we do have Scandal with the four staff ready, as you uh, pointed out already. And because of that, he has an infested life seer in him. We'll see if he is able to pick up Solo or Nexus, which are the two closest. Actually, no, he's gonna TP top, looking for the highest farmed hero on the set of Rock's Kiss. Because they, they still saw it with their other ward. So good warding for Rock's Kiss. Their, their vision is really helping them get back in this game. Yep. And the counter wards are here. How did they saw it? No, it's not as funny as you say it out loud, I guess. Oh well. <laughs> Talking about how did they how did they saw me? <laughs> yeah, but then how did they saw the wards? I don't know. Right. It didn't fit. We have got five heroes of Rock's Kiss gathered on the bottom lane, by the way. This looks to be a tier two tower down soon because I'm not sure if well Empire they they would really like to pick off heroes, but how badly would they want to team fight? I'm not too sure if that's gonna be the right play for them, especially not since everything on Rock's case is up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think Rock's case, Yeah, the bear is taking a lot of damage. It has no defenses. He hasn't built uh, oh. Quiris. Here's the. the song. Nice. There's four people here, Dark uh -huh. Sea World gets put. Hey, comes in images image. as well. Vacuum, that's gonna be a good fight right there. Nice life strike rate coming out for Nolas wanna fly steel though. But it's two kills going the way of rocks. Yule gets picked up on the backside with Silent just chasing him down as Mag gets chased down by Nexus, who changes his opinion and goes to help the rest of his teammates. We already see BZ down solo will be next. And all of a sudden, Rock's Kiss Nexus. trying to get themselves out. Nexus Shikushi's himself away will be enough. Sinoi cannot get away anymore and he will get picked off with just a couple more hits. And that's gonna be four for two supports and that's so not worth it. Ultra kill for the life stealer. Yeah, the, the thing about that vacuum was it'll really only hit just to like if it was on the whole team i think they could have won the fight right then and there but because they only vacuumed in really the lena and the rubik who at the end of the day just this they're not that relevant to this i mean if rubik gets a big steal of course but uh they were able to pursue the fight basically without the help of these two heroes and because the the are their three cores are so far ahead or they're doing extremely well they can still prosecute a team fight very effectively after Darkseer uses his spells, after Naga uses her spells. So well played to Empire. Roxkis, I think as you said, Shiver, they didn't necessarily need to take that fight all out. That said, it's not fatal. They didn't lose Weaver. He does lose his Aegis, so maybe actually Nexus should have stayed in and fought more because he ends up wasting the Aegis, basically. Yeah, I mean, they didn't even get the tower out of that, right? I don't know why they did the song. I mean, I think they could have taken the tower and backed off, perhaps. Or just backed up, back off earlier. And at this point, they need a split push. That's the only solution. They can't go for five-man push when they know that Empire can just respond with a five-man of their own. And they, at the moment, have got the upper hand. Even if Roxkiss has an Aegis, apparently that doesn't help them out all that much. We've got well, Empire taking the gold lead, yeah. experience lead. Stop it's more that they didn't use the Aegis, like Nexus ran away from that fight as if he didn't have one. Whereas maybe two lives for the Weaver you can at least kill. I'm not sure who, but somebody. Well, we do have another Roshan up in about four minutes, so they get to try again soon, but probably, I mean, I'm expecting Empire to be more prepared. They'll have the timer as well, and they've got themselves a nice uh, jumping kind of lineup. They can just jump, take the fight, steal yeah. the ages, get themselves out. The only thing that can stop them is the song, but perhaps they'll try to force out the song beforehand. As a Scandal actually smoked up, together with uh, his two uh, supports, his two lackeys, Looking for a pickoff. So he will jump himself into a lot of people though if he does do that. Oh, he finds Joel. That's gonna be one Chen out of play already before anything else happens and the rest of Rock's Kiss will just back off because there's way too many people here, Vampire. Mm -hmm. And they can take the tier one very easily off of this. By the way, you can see. Did somebody just pop BKB? Yeah, I heard that too. Yeah, it's Nexus. He was yeah. worried. I. Honestly, you can't really blame him. 
there's they could have stunned him out and just killed him. They're going to take a tier one off of this. Silent doing exactly what we expected. He used the Midas to give him the ramping gold to go straight for Abyssal after phase armlet. I think that's smart. Uh, and that might be the last you see of Weaver as a force in this game. Because once you add Lasso and Abyssal and Doom and all these ways to lock Weaver down, and it's a Weaver that didn't go towards Lincoln's Sphere, he took a BKB and has no gold on top of it, you can forget Weaver. This game will be decided on whether Sidoi can do a lot as uh, Lone Druid or not. Whether he gets a lot of entangles or not. Right. <laughs> it does have an internal cooldown, unfortunately, so there is a limit to how RNG you can get with it. Yeah. Let's see if uh, if they can get lucky. Looks like Ruxus is looking to defend. We already have an infested life sitter sitting in the hands of uh, Scandal, or I don't know where nice he's sitting, staff. actually. But... See that four staff? <laughs> Good stuff. Not, they forced oh, F mag forward, but that's it gonna be it's your picked play. up song. It's gonna be after the chant, and actually, Silent will just pick up solo. There we go. Dark Sea still goes down. In comes the Laguna Blade. Vacuum still there, but does it actually matter? Not for BZZ, it does because he's already dead. Cedo tries to run for it as well, looking for entangles, can't find it, will die. That's gonna be a triple kill for Silent as Nexus is turned on his BKB time lapses, tries to run for it, gets bashed. Of course, he does get bashed. But at least they don't have detection, so he still gets himself <laughs> out. But again, fight one by Rox as Solo, apparently still alive, which doesn't really happen. He bought back. Often. He bought back. Oh, seriously? For reasons that are that are mysterious to me at at best. He used his song. He did his duty. So I don't know. He used his song. He buys back and just eats a doom, which is pretty funny, actually. Boom. Dominated. I mean, at least he, it wasn't a doom on Weaver, I guess. Like his buyback triggered them to doom him instead of Weaver. Yeah. So. By certain calculations, I can imagine that being worth it. It's so tough to be Nexus this game. I feel like even though you have the BKB, you still have to go Lincolns. And just like, well, what do you actually do other than just survive fights? Like that bottom tier 2 fight where uh, Empire gets an ultra kill on Silent and Weaver walks away from the fight. It's like, is this really what we wanted to happen for Weaver to walk away from this with no benefit? Not really. But then again, is this really the kind of fight that Empire wants to try and take in to begin with? So, no, I, I don't know. I, I think Rock's Kiss, they have got a pretty good turtle lineup with the Darcy, with the uh, Chen. But then yeah. again, Empire has got a pretty good go high ground kind of lineup with that Bat Rider and with, uh, hopefully for them, an Aegis soon because Roshan is back up. And I think that Empire can take it. Rock's Kiss, they'll have very little to say in the matter unless they want to yeah. use a song for that, though the song is going to be on cooldown for another 70 seconds. So that's enough time to take a Rosh. That's why Empire are going. They they know that Naga... It's actually very important to get your support Naga to level 11 quickly if you can because the just the extra song... Oh my god. Isn't it a pleasure watching Scandal's Batrider again? Like, it gets banned so much just because it's a really strong hero. But he's so good at this hero, right? Like, 4, 0, oh, and 11 this mm -hmm. game. It's insane. He is, uh, I believe, the only one that hasn't died yet this game. No, not the only one. Doom hasn't died yet either. 6 to 0 to 7, also pretty impressive. Now also with the Shiva's guard. Yeah, Empire is just... They're, they're ramping out of control right now. This is very tough to come back from for Rockscares. They need nothing short but a miracle. They also need a bit of uh, Empire throwing their game, I think. Which... Uh, I mean, they've done that before, so it's not out of the question, but Empire, they should be taking this game if they can just uh, keep their cool. Yeah, all they need to do is play normally, and at this point they have a pretty fairly commanding lead. Yeah. Lifestealer picking up a full Assault Cross. Uh, he's detoured from the Abyssal, which I think is really smart because he doesn't need it. Weaver isn't that meaningful right now. Whereas the Assault Cross gives them an amazing capacity of pushing. Like, they're going to get these towers down so much quicker because they have the de-armor effect on it. So I think this is great responsiveness in the item pickups. I think the Shiva's guard for Mag will also be extremely useful. Because, yeah, just, you know, pop that, slow down the attack speed. Here is Roxkiss's last chance. Let's see what they make of it. Yeah, Mag already sitting inside that wall. They want to try and get him perhaps first. They can't really. Always want to fly at least. Already picked up Mag. Already doomed up Nexus, who is also now lassoed, can't do anything, and Lone Druid also not really able to contribute at all. That's gonna be Chen down the drain, and the rest of Rock's Kiss not able to get a foot in the door at all. Mag, he was the one on the front Bye -bye. on the front there, and he could just couldn't do anything right there. And Snare still up on Silent, gets entangled as well, Silent indeed. Or Nexus violent buying back, already time lapsing. Bash up on BCC, gets four staffed into safety, and Snare is there again, but they just can't do the damage. Perhaps now they can. No, not yet. Aegis gets burned. 
that's going to be Empire coming back oh into this, God. looking for Solo. It is going to be the GG Rocks Kiss. They don't have damage. They don't have the means to kill off Empire. <laughs> <laughs> they sent a courier in. <laughs> yes, good times. Good times. GG well played. I mean, sending in couriers is good for the fans because people get items for that and all that. But Oh, yeah. Jerax got an item. So, yeah. Everybody's getting items. Everybody getting items. Apart from us. It's kind of sad. But I have to say, impressive play from... No, not... No, well... Not impressive play from Rox, but nice play from Empire. Yeah. And yes. I, I was kind of disappointed by, by Rox, to be honest. Me too. But this is more or less the expected outcome. We weren't... We were probably not going to see two seasons in a row in which, like, the 10th team comes in and randomly dominates everybody. Yeah, so that's true. Uh, Empire, honestly, I, I like seeing the, Chris, the good form that they were in the second game. Because if they have any chance against Navi, they have to play well. Uh, they have to tighten up the early game, especially because these two early games were so sloppy, and Navi loves that because they are always going to crush you if the, the fight state is really chaotic. But later on, Empire just looked as as they went through this game. Scandal was amazing. Mag was really strong, and those that last fight, Silent did an insane job of staying alive there. Like they were railing him with all of their damage, and he still managed to keep infesting and raging and walking around and making sure that they couldn't kill him. So, uh, very well played to Empire. They take a well deserved two zero victory, and uh, in a bit we'll see if they can take one over Navi. It's not going to be easy. No, they tried it before. They were able to take one game off of Empire off of Navi. We're going to see if they. Uh grew over the times and if they can uh, get themselves together to take a series to get themselves facing up against the Lions. Anyway, that's going to be our next matchup. The official starting time for that is 1800, which is in about 10 minutes time, but I'm going to expect it's going to be taking a little bit longer because we do have Navi still needed to set up on stage, etc. So right. bear with us. We'll be right back and, uh, you know, stick around. <laughs> 